Hello everyone and welcome to a really wild game uh, from uh, the second half of the Norway Chess Tournament. It is Hikaru Nakamura with white versus Magnus Carlsen with black and uh, that, uh, that that's a really difficult matchup. Uh, for, for anyone so far uh, in all of the Norway Chesses combined where Armageddon has been employed, Magnus Carlsen only lost uh, five um, uh, instances of the Armageddon matchup. Not even lost the game but lost the match. For example, if you have uh, white and you get a draw, you lose the match. So... Uh, uh, five of them have been lost, and uh, I, I think over over thirty something uh, he has won. Uh, so not uh, not an easy task for Hikaru, and you have to win on demand. But let's see what happened. It's a really wild game. You guys will enjoy it. Uh, Hikaru with white opens with pawn to d4. Uh, we have knight to f6 by Magnus c4, e6, knight to c3, and d5. So a nice queen's gambit declined. C captures, Hikaru goes for the uh, exchange variation and bishop to g5, the so-called positional line. We have bishop to e7 uh, and pawn to e3. We have pawn to h6 challenging the bishop, bishop to h4, and the bishop to g4 attacking Hikaru's queen. Uh, so pawn to f3 attacking the bishop keeping all of the material on the board bishop to e6 and bishop to d3 we have c5 by magnus knight g to e2 and now knight to c6 we have castles by both of them and here there are a couple of uh, uh games where this position has been reached bishop to f2 is a non move bishop to c2 is a non move uh, arjun had this position and also vasily vanchuk had this position but uh he plays rook to e1 and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game so as you know, in Armageddon, uh, white starts with 10 minutes uh, here in Norway chess, at least black starts with 7. And the situation now is Hikaru spent uh, 16 seconds for his opening moves. Magnus also didn't spend quite, quite a lot, but uh, he did spend over, over half a minute. Uh, we have rook to e8 and now bishop back to c2. Uh, rook to c8, Magnus uh, fully developing his pieces, knight to f4 now, with some uh, ideas of putting pressure on that bishop on e6, but also if needed you can play the knight d3, knight to e5, and so on. So Magnus captures on d4, we have knight captures on e6, f captures on e6, and now e captures on d4. Knight captures on d4, Hikaru uh, seemingly blundering a piece here, but not really, if, if you take on d4, then bishop to c5, uh, secures your queen, and you, you blunder. Uh, so bishop to g6 by Hikaru, uh, or uh, rather uh, bishop to g6 is very important, uh, yeah, uh, obviously you, you can't play this, but for a very different reason. It attacks the rook and here Magnus spends a couple of seconds. He could decide to give up the rook, go for activity with something like bishop to c5, but it doesn't really work. Uh, as uh, for example, after bishop to c5, Hikaru would just move back, bishop to f2, and your rook here is still looking rather weird. You can't really uh, do all, all that much with it. And now bishop captures on d4 really is a threat. So that's why after bishop g6, rook to f8, and now bishop to f2. Again, of course, if you capture bishop to c5, wins the queen. So bishop to f2, and now knight to c6. He, uh, Magnus goes back, we have rook captures an e6, and pawn to d4. Chases away the knight, knight to e2, and bishop to c5. Again, going uh, uh, for, for this diagonal, knight to f4 by Hikaru, and now uh, uh, the only move for Magnus is bishop to d6. But uh, this is Armageddon, he's already down to 3 minutes and 15 seconds he plays knight to d5 and he makes uh, a critical error in the uh, in judgment and in the position feel free to pause the video and punish this insolence from the former world classical champion while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations uh, on being a true master in uh, tricky positions. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen to b3. Looks impossible because you're leaving the knight on f4 hanging, but the knight on f4 uh, cannot be captured uh, for a very uh, obvious reason. If you capture the knight on f4, then rook to e8 with check and uh, you, you lose the queen. Uh, but there are other tricky lines that you could, for example, play. Uh, you could play knight c to b4 to defend your knight here, and then you have to play rook to e4 to defend the knight on f4, but still there's there's no better move. Rook captures on f4 has to be played, rook captures, and now you have to unpin, uh, but still rook to f7, and uh, Hikaru's position is just uh, uh, outstanding. The b7 pawn is hanging. If you tend to that, then something like bishop to f5 goes after the rook, maybe bishop f5, rook to d7 attacks the queen and the rook. Uh, objectively, it's winning, and as Hikaru still has has a lot of time uh, we could uh, well we could 
maybe uh, considered that he is still within his preparation. So Magnus accepts the challenge head on. He plays knight, captures an f4, and he gives up his queen for, for a minor piece and the rook. Rook to d6 opens up a discovery. King to h8 and rook captures on d8. Magnus plays rook c, captures on d8, and now Hikaru goes for queen captures on b7. You could also prepare it with bishop to e4, but uh, queen captures on b7 also comes with an attack on the knight. So knight e5, and now bishop back to e4, which is very, very important. You don't want uh, Magnus's rooks going to the to the second rank. Uh, we have bishop to b6, and now pawn to a4 right away. Hikaru cannot allow this bishop to remain on this long diagonal. Knight to c4, trying to trick Hikaru, uh, of course, uh, Hikaru will not play a5 now, but queen to a6, attacks the knight and tries to trick Magnus now, should Magnus capture on b2, then queen b5 uh, attacks the knight, and after queen to a6, uh, knight to d2 by Magnus, we have pawn to a5, attacking the bishop, seems like you're inviting knight to b3 to go after the rook and the pawn, but this would actually be really bad, because you just take the bishop and after captures, captures, and then of course the a a8 square is covered, uh, Hikaru would win this easily, so Magnus finds poison poison in the position. Bishop to c5. And now, uh, if Hikaru plays a weird move, let's say Hikaru plays something like rook to c1, he goes after the bishop, it's uh, game over. Uh, Magnus will just play knight captures on e4, and after f captures d3, and that's uh, uh, that's all there is to it. Now the threat is knight to e2 check, you, you block the queen's um, uh, coverage of the e2 square, knight to e2 check will win the rook, so you can't capture on c5 with the bishop, and if you capture with the, uh, the bishop with the rook, then pawn to d2, and you cannot stop promotion, uh, regardless of, of what you play, covered by the uh, by the rook, by the knight, uh, you cannot go rook back to c1, uh, I mean, doesn't really make, make, make much sense, you could go back with the queen, but then just d1, uh, for example, queen to f1, you're gonna bring a queen into the game, you have to give up the queen, captures, you have to give up the uh, bishop as well, but now knight to e2 check, the, the f file is cut off, and once the king moves, this is just gonna be checkmate. So that's the problem. Uh, so after this bishop to c5 move, Hikaru plays bishop to b7. He figures out that uh, the, the e4 pawn, uh, the, the bishop on e4 cannot uh, allow to be stay there. Knight to b3. Magnus attacks the rook. We have rook to d1 and now pawn to d3. Magnus again finds poison. Uh, bishop captures on c5. Knight captures. We have queen captures on a7 attacking the knight and knight captures on b7. Queen captures and now rook f to e8. Uh, Magnus uh, tries to uh, act activate his rook, maybe rook to e2, rook captures and g2 can allow him at least a perpetual. So Hikaru should play queen to f7, but he plays pawn to g3, and this allows Magnus sort of back into the game, but only if Hikaru doesn't find the best move. Magnus plays pawn to d2. Now the threat is rook to e1 check and uh, rook captures on d1, and then you just sacrifice the rook and bring a queen into the game. So the knight of course cannot be captured, uh, but it's very, very hard to actually spot what you have to play here. Uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the only move that wins the game for Hikaru uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, uh, as Hikaru did not spot it. The only move that wins is king to f1, but it's still such a such a disgusting continuation that no one finds this with two minutes on the clock. I'm going to show it to you, just to uh, show you what, what if I had to find. So, okay, you stop rook to e1, but now look at this, knight d5, threatens knight to e3, check. Rook captures on d2, you eliminate the pass pawn, knight to e3 check, and now king e1, the only move that wins. Now you play knight to g2, open up a discovery, uh, plus it's a check from the knight, king to d1, rook to e1 check, king to c2, now knight to e3 check, forces the king away from the rook, uh, king to c3, rook to c1 check, and finally after king to b3, you capture the rook on d2, and it seems like black is completely winning here, but there is queen to uh, a8 with check, only move king to h7, and now queen to e4 check wins the knight here. But the uh, show doesn't stop there. For example, queen captures on e3, and there's no good way to save your rooks. For example, rook, rook to c2, it looks like you're still uh, doing great progress. Now you run into rook a checking h7, and of course, queen to e4 check. King goes back, and now you capture the rook, and that's it. Uh, you have a rook for a queen, and if you capture the queen, then white's a pawn is just completely winning. So that's why it's winning, but uh, if you find king f1 here with two minutes on the clock, well, okay, you might play it and then try and get everything else, uh, you know, uh, during the game. 
uh, but he Carl wasn't able to do it. He played queen to b4, and now Magnus has a chance to get back into the game, but only if Magnus finds the correct idea. It's the third pause the video moment of the game, uh, but uh, and I know it's an Armageddon game, but you guys will feel great if you spot this one. Feel free uh, to do it while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, congratulations, I'm pretty sure all of you found it. It's rook to d4. Uh, rook to d4 takes away the queen, uh, queen's control over this diagonal. The queen on b4 is really just guarding d1 square, so you don't have rook to e1 check. But now you can't play queen to c3 due to knight e2 check, and you've lost your queen. So uh, there's nothing more for Hikaru here. He has to capture the rook. Uh, queen captures on d4. Uh, sorry, you can't play uh, this. So uh, queen captures on d2. You have to eliminate the passed pawn. Rook captures on d2. Rook captures and now knight to e6. So Magnus from being lost the entire game uh, is now in a position where, okay, Hikaru is still better. The two connected passed pawns or soon to be connected passed pawns are stronger than a knight. But uh, Magnus has real chances of, of fighting back here. So pawn to b4 by Hikaru. Always the strongest move. King to g8. We have pawn to b5. Uh, rook to a8. Magnus goes after one of the passed pawns. Rook to a2. King f7. Uh, king to f2 and now king to e7. We have pawn to b6 uh, and knight to c5. We have king to e3, king to d6 and king to f4. We have pawn to g6 and pawn to h4. So this is already move 46. So time control has been reached and players are receiving one second per move. Uh, but although, uh, you know, those of you who are playing online chess, uh, uh, one second increment seems like a whole lot. However, over the board, that's quite uh, quite a lot. You have to, you know, grab your piece, capture or move with somewhere else, hit the clock. And I mean, one second really is not a lot. But Hikaru, obviously, the speed demon, even in reality, king to d5. We have king to g4, king to c6. Now Magnus with three seconds on the clock. Pawn to h5, Hikaru uh, creates some pass pawns on the king side, rook to g8, uh, and now rook uh, to c2, pinning the knight. We have king to b5, and h captures on g6. We have rook captures on g6, and king to h5, and here Magnus grabbed the rook, he hit the clock, but he hit the clock as the clock already hit 0 seconds um, uh, on, on, on time, and uh, that was it. Uh, Magnus loses the Armageddon, he loses on time, and Hikaru wins uh, wins this matchup. So the, Magnus' sixth loss in Armageddon altogether in all of the tournaments of, of Norway chess where Armageddon has been used, and it's been used uh, since 2019, I believe. So not, not a bad result, although uh, in this game, of course, not, after getting back from that crazy preparation from Hikaru being down a queen, uh, it, it, you know, not, not the best to lose on time. And I also want to show you a video of this. And also, yeah, I forgot to show you. Here's a nice video of Magnus and Hikaru shaking hands. This is actually before the game. So, yeah, nice, nice standing handshake. Forgot to show you that. But, yeah, uh, let's see what, what, what this really looked like. Uh, uh, have at if it. He, if he can gather some of those pawns. No, Hikaru. Hikaru might oh, simplify. Oh, Magnus oh. might flag. He almost flagged. He wasn't down to one second. And there's only one second. He can, oh he's about God. to flag again. Wow, Magnus right trying to the edge. One second again, he's, he's gonna losing. flag! Oh, he lost flag. Oh time. my gosh! I hate, oh my god, the reaction of Magnus. Oh, what in the world did Cannot we just see? Cannot believe it! <laughs> Magnus is like, he knows. So a bit of an a angry Magnus for the moment, but uh, who wouldn't be? I mean, it's not losing the game, it, it's losing after coming back from brilliant preparation from Hikaru. But that's chess uh, and Hikaru, I mean, Hikaru is currently the only other 2800 player in the world. Uh, you know, it's not it's not uh, not a terrible uh, l loss to, to lose to to a player like Hikaru. Like I said, it's it's uh, I think for Magnus, it's it's just because he, if he lost, you know, just the preparation, okay, fine. But now after he has a fighting chance, now it, it hurts a bit more, I believe. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Brilliant stuff from Hikaru. Uh, uh, we'll uh, check out at least one more game from this round, and then we're gonna ch uh, discuss the standings. Uh, I would like to thank Richard Nickerson, Ivan Sterling, Michael Bowers, Eric Lee, and Timothy Larkin for a contribution to my channel. Uh, thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, but mostly covering Norway chess. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And as Hikaru said before the video, today I'm playing the GOAT, uh, and uh, yes, the, the, the GOAT uh, he has defeated. See you soon.